Today will be all about books and a recommendation of books that you should read if you are interested in minimalism. I've prepared 8 of them, probably way too many for a minimalist, but I'm sure there will be one that can feed your lifestyle. Whether you are new to minimalism or you are a minimalist with years of experience. Because the books that I gonna recommend range from lifestyle, fashion, productivity, and even starting a business. But what they all have in common is minimalism. So let us get started. The first book, Minimalism, Live a Meaningful Life by The Minimalist. If you have watched my earlier videos, you know that I started my minimalism journey after listening to The Minimalist podcast. So both Ryan and Josh had a significant influence to my minimalism journey at the very start. And their book, Minimalism, is the first minimalism book I've ever read and it definitely makes the whole minimalism process clearer. So straight up, the biggest takeaway I got from this book is that minimalism will be different from everyone and there's no rules or formula to follow to become a minimalist. And in this book, they listed down 5 main values that can allow us to live a meaningful life. And no surprise, those 5 main values aren't material possessions that we typically pursue. Instead, they are health, relationship, passion, growth, and contribution. I couldn't agree more with those 5 core values and that's the reason why I love about this book because it doesn't only just tell us how we can have less but it also focus on the why. It shows us how we can have more after having less. By the way, it's a short and concise book so it's definitely a great one to start with. Next will be Digital Minimalism, Choosing a Focused Life in a Noisy World by Carl Newport. This shouldn't be unfamiliar to my fellow minimalists and I just love how they change their book cover to something so minimal with a cut off charging cable so I can do something as slim as this. Let's get back to this book and I know it's popular amongst the minimalists but we have to agree that digital minimalism is highly needed in today's world. We are constantly bombarded with notifications, news, social media, emails, and whatever digital distractions you can think of. And if we put it this way, this device that meant to serve us are actually making us more distracted. If you are done with decluttering your material possessions and looking for a new place to be intentional about, I think a good place will be your digital space and this book will help you out. Based on Carl, Digital minimalism is a philosophy in which we have to be intentional with the use of our technology and also be mindful with our screen time because we can easily spend more than 10 hours in front of a screen every day. And that's what all the social media conglomerates want, our attention. They need us to be hooked onto the device as long as possible. And that's also the reason why social media platforms are built this way, like a slot machine. You pull the lever and wait for the reward. So this book has step-to-step -step guide for us to have a digital declutter. Having a 30 days digital detox, for example, deleting social media from your phone, embracing slow media, find new things to do during your free time, and also turn your device into a single purpose tool instead of living your life in the device. By the way, the angle of digital minimalism is not about throwing your phone away and live like a caveman, but it's to be intentional with the use, discard what's bad and keep those that are helpful to us. And those practices allow us to rethink the relationship between us and our digital space and it's pretty much needed in today's era. The next book is Goodbye Things on Minimalist Living by Fumio Sasaki. I'll say this book displays Fumio's way of living a minimalist lifestyle and it can be really relatable because he shared with us his experience and transition from post-minimalism to becoming a minimalist. At the same time, some of the minimalist approach can be considered as radical to many. For example, having a uniform and his advice of don't think, discard. Not trying to say his advice aren't good, there are a few examples that align with me but some of them can be a little bit extreme for many. Regardless, I still love how he explains and mention about the perks of having less. Not just because of the ease of cleaning up but also the emotional and mental benefits we will receive from minimalism. And throughout the book, he provides a lot of practical tips on how we can approach minimalism and how we can say goodbye to things. All in all, I think this is a good how-to book if you are starting minimalism. 
And for the examples, take it with a pinch of salt, it might inspire you to create a version of your own minimalist lifestyle. Essentialism by Greg McKeown This is another popular book that needs no introduction. If those previous book is about lifestyle, then this minimalism book is about productivity and your professional career. It teaches us how we can focus on things we genuinely care about and how we can say no to those that aren't our priority. And one of my favorite takeaway from this book is knowing when to say yes and no. When we are saying yes to everything, we need to divert our energy to all directions. And at the end of the day, our work will suffer. Instead, we should focus on what's truly essential to us. Choose the option that yields the greatest result. There's almost no way we can be a yes man and agree with every single project that come in our path, especially in our workplace. That's the reason why it's essential for us to learn how to say no. By the way, if you're not a fan of books or reading, Greg has a class on Skillshare, the perfect segue for us to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. His class, Simple Productivity, How to Accomplish More with Less. That's the easier and faster way for us to understand the concept of essentialism without reading the book. It will help you to identify your priority and learn practical tactics on how to say no to distraction in your life. And the most important thing is to accomplish more with less. Other than Greg's class, they offer thousands of classes ranging from starting your own business, perfecting your resume, to creative skills like woodworking and creating your own animation. So if you're interested in acquiring more skills, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get 30% off their annual premium membership. And that's how you can explore more practical skills. You know, even after you have already had a free trial of Skillshare, you still can take advantage of this offer with an annual subscription fee for less than $10 every month to get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. So I hope you can make the full use out of this and let us continue to the next book. Project 333 by Courtney Carver. 333 is pretty simple and the book emphasizes on this fashion challenge that proves that you can have less but yet still fashionable or at the very least wear what you love. And as the name suggests, Project 333 is a fashion challenge for us to survive with 33 clothes in our closet within three months. You know, I have to admit that some of those examples are directed towards the ladies when it comes to the things in the capsule wardrobe. However, the concept and lessons are still applicable for men as well. It focuses on how we can apply capsule wardrobe in different seasons for travel and even for your kids. As someone who was deeply interested in fashion, this book helps to make my progress of decluttering my wardrobe more intentional because instead of getting rid all of them in one shot, I think it's a better idea to have a clear direction of what you want in your wardrobe to be like. So to prevent you from decluttering the wrong things. If I have to recommend one book on how to apply minimalism in your business or you are interested in becoming a solopreneur, that would be The Company of One by Paul Jarvis. Instead of what we conventionally think about business, the bigger it is, the better it gets. He argues that by going small, it might be a more effective and efficient way to bring us financial and time freedom for both you and the company because there are no redundant and time-consuming meetings, the trouble to manage a team of employees, and not to mention companies' politics. Even if you don't plan to make your business small, but I think it's still a good read. The next book will be an easy one, Less by Rachel Aust. And if you are interested in minimalism, meal preps, or plants, you might know this YouTuber, Rachel Aust. And if somehow you dislike reading, you probably wouldn't even watch this video about book. But if you want something easy to digest, then this book by Rachel is the best entry-level book about minimalism because it's pretty visual. It has tons of aesthetically pleasing pictures and different ideas of minimalist home decor, plants, wardrobe, and even ways to be sustainable. It also provides lots of flowchart for new minimalists to begin their decluttering journey. There's a lot of inspiration you can find in there and different ways you can adopt minimalism into your lifestyle. It's a nice book to read if you are looking for something to relax and get some inspiration. Last but not least, Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty.
I'm sure you guys heard of this, it's a pretty popular book right now and I can't even get it from the library so I only have this in digital format. I know this book is not about minimalism and Jay is probably not a minimalist as well but I was recommended by a viewer to read this book and halfway through I realized that there are a few similarities between my minimalism values and what Jay mentioned in his book. His realization after his experience of stripping everything off to become a monk, he didn't just let go of his material possessions but also the negative emotion and mental baggage. And one of my favorite key points that align with my minimalism philosophy, that will be understanding our good intention. When it comes to our desire and dream, we shouldn't focus on our goal at a surface level. For example, owning a big house or buying the fastest car. Rather, we need to dive deep into our root intention. Is it the emotion or the recognition you want to feel after owning those stuff? And when we are clear about our root intention, we might realize that those material possessions might not be something we really need. And he even elaborates on dealing with fears, finding our skills and passions, being present at the moment, and just improve yourself as a whole. And actually, I'm halfway through the book and I'm already loving this, so I'm pretty sure you will be interested in this book as well. So these are the 8 books I would like to recommend to you guys if you are interested in minimalism and I'll have the link in the description below. I'm sure there are other notable books on minimalism that I haven't come across. So if you have something in mind, let me know what I should read next in the comment section. And if you are new here, you might consider subscribing to this channel and on the bell icon for future videos. And if you enjoyed watching this, a click on the like button will help a lot with the growth of this channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching this and I shall see you guys again on the next one.